We're going to be programming our IND560X from Toledo for our Crandall model, any machine really, with the IND560X. So the first thing you're going to do is turn it on. You're going to scroll down with your down key and find the menu setup key, which is this one right here. Press it one time, then it'll get you into the setup menu. The first thing we're going to change, we're going to look at the scale parameters. You press the enter key, wrong. Press the right side key, and it'll get you in there. And the first increment to change would be type. Press enter. It's going to ask you scale number. We're just calling it scale number one, the type. They're typically always analog. Once you've gotten there, you can just go back out. Then you're going to go to capacity by scrolling down once. Enter. Primary unit, typically it's going to be a pound, could be kg. If you want to change it, you're going to scroll up or down to get the desired setting. Press enter. Number of ranges is going to be one. Press enter. Capacity and increment. On this particular model, it's a five gallon filler. It's going to have a hundred pound scale. When we have a hundred pound scale, we're going to be 5.02 pounds. Blank over capacity on this one, two digits. When you're done, up and out again. Okay, so back out. Over to calibration, enter. This is pretty much always going to be in there. Your GEO code, 16, the serial number, that's automatically going to appear. You're going to go into calibration units. For us, this is going to be sold in America, this particular machine, so it's pounds. Linearity adjust, disabled. Analog gain jumper, that should be typical. It shouldn't have to change it. So you would normally go up and out, but we're going to calibrate, show you how to calibrate. First thing you're going to want to make sure your scale is empty. Nothing on the roller platform. And we're going to hit the zero. It's going to give you a little direction. It's called capture zero. Empty scale and press start. This is actually the start, so we're going to press it. It's actually calibrating the zero position of the scale. Capture zero, okay. Up and out. Now we're going to go into the uh, third key over, press it, and it's going to ask you for the test. So we have a 25 pound weight that we're using. You can use, you have to use at least 10% of the capacity of the scale. So 10 pounds, 25 pounds happens to be what we're using. So you got your test weight. I'm going to press enter because I know it's 25 pounds. Once you press enter again, it's going to tell you what to do. Place 25 pounds on scale, press start. So I place 25 pounds on my scale. I press start. It's going to count down and calibrate. So now it knows the distance in memory through 0 to 25 pounds. And it captures that span. So I can go, again, I'm done. I can go out. I'll actually remove my weight. You go out again you're back to the menu so now we're going to get into zero so now we're all done calibrating we're on the zero and really you can enter or go to the right key sorry and it's going to ask a couple things azm and display we really don't use it auto zero off auto zero range says 0.5 that's just already in there if i go down let's talk about under zero blanking 99d we don't change it power up, restart, and yet we don't change it. So back up and out. It's going to ask you ranges. Enter, power up, zero. No, it's disabled. Go down, it's asking a bunch of other crap. We don't deal with it, so just up and out. Now we got tear. So types of tear, hit enter. Push button tear is enabled. Now that's going to enable this switch so you can tear it manually. Keyboard tear. Enabled. Net sign correction disabled. So now we got auto tear. On this particular model, it's disabled. Some models, it is enabled, but on this one, no. Auto clear. I do enable this. Now what this feature does is when you remove a container from the scale, It'll automatically zero because it knows its original setting, so it's just going to zero the scale when it's empty. So it'll do it automatically, and that threshold should be 0.1 pound. I scroll through here, you get to the other page, motion checked, enabled. This is all 
has to do with printing. We're not really using it, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. Again, disable and power up and restart. So up and out of there, you're done. Go to units. This is asking you other units other than your primary. On this one, we don't have a secondary unit. Typically, we don't put it in there. If you did, you could put in KG, whatever you wanted. There's other available spaces for third unit. Again, that's we don't really get into them. You could if you wanted to. Uh, go down below units, you got rate. Again, we don't get into them. It's gonna ask you some other things, but we really don't deal with them. So, we're just up and out of rates. Filter, again, we don't really use it, so we're just up and out. Stability, we don't use it again. So we're pretty much skipping through rates, filter, stability. Log or print, don't use it. Unless you guys are setting up something for print information, you can do that yourselves if you need to. Minimum wave, don't use it. Reset, don't use it. Now we got application. You go to application, hit the right key. It'll get you into the sub parameters of application. Go. Okay, so we're back to application. The first thing we're gonna do is memory. So you go right key. I think these are all gonna be related to the printing again, because we really don't get into alibi, so go down here, we got tear table, don't really get into it. Message table, no nope. target table. Let's see here. Nope, we're not using that because that's all part of their programming for the PLC portion more or less of the IND560. Now we're on app. Operation, right key. Now we do use targets. So I get into target, my source is always gonna be displayed weight. If it's not displayed weight, you can change it by toggling up or down, but we're gonna be displayed and up and out. Scroll down, now we're definitely using comparators. The comparators, what they're referring to is looking for a set point versus zero. So they're comparing from zero where a set point would be. So I press enter. Now most of our machines are going to have two set points. This particular model just has one set point. It's just filling in until it sees set point one and then it shuts off. Normally our set point one would be considered dribble. And we would write this in here. This gets a little bit complicated, but let's see. We got set point one. Now we have it already written, but if I wanted to rewrite it, I believe we go to the pencil key. And well, no, this isn't writing it. This is actually telling you how to, tells you what that comparator is and where it's going from. So source is displayed weight. Now it's active and this can be changed right here. This means greater or equal to the set point value. So that means that comparator is gonna fire at either equal to the set point or greater than the set point value. And that's what we're using it in. Then, then it's got the description. We already have it in as set point one off because that's simply what it's doing, just shutting off. And right now the current value that it has in here is 20 pounds. When you write it originally, it'll probably be at about 0.1 pounds, but this has already been rewritten because it's an adjustable value. So you're just going to press, it's going to say OK, you escape. Now if I wanted to re rewrite that, so it's going to be, I just erased it, so if I want to write it, so we're going to hit the pencil key, the source is going to be displayed weight, so press enter. Now I can rewrite everything. So displayed weight, yes, it's going to be active when we're greater or equal to. So we got greater or equal to, press enter, description, and this is kind of a pain in the butt to put in there, but it is SP1, and in our case for this, it's going to be off. And in a lot of normal cases, SP1 is dribble flow, so you'd actually write that out, SP1, dribble flow. But in this case, SP1 is shut off, so you can see here, you're going to have to get, it's a pain, but you look for the S. You hit it, it's gonna go up there. Now I gotta find the P, so there it is there. So I wrote my 
description, and again, it's SP1. Now, when I did a number, you have to go over to the number key. Don't try and scroll here. It's now you're not going to find it. So I got SP dash off. Press enter. Limit. I have to put something in here. I'm just putting in point one. Okay. Yes. So there's my description back. So I'm done with that writing that comparator. Totalization. Don't worry about it. ID. Now this is alright, maybe not as important as I thought. So the ID mode for us in this particular part of it, we're not using, so back out of there. Discrete IO. Now on this model we're not using an input, but on most models we do use an input and it's gonna be tear. So on a normal model, if you press enter here, actually the right key. Okay, it's writing it. So you're actually rewriting the input. So writing it, it's going to tell you its position. Normally the first position would be 0.1.1. Polarity, true, that's fine. And our other machines, this would probably say tear. So if I were to do this, you scroll down or up. Let's see where we can find tear. There it is. You're going to scroll until you find Terry, you would press enter and then write that in there. For us, on this one, it was simply trigger one, we're just going to leave it alone. So that's fine, we're out of there, out of there. Outputs, this machine is definitely using one output. And it is the comparator, which we consider set point one. The output, output position, again, it's right here, we're going to get into write, I'm just looking at it. Discrete output edit, output address is 0.1.1, again, that's position 1 for output. Assignment, yeah, it's comparator 1, which is okay, that's all good. Okay, so we've already assigned it, called it comparator 1. Now, terminal, let's see, reset. We don't do anything to reset. Terminal. Get in there, device. This is basically giving it its own information. So we really don't deal with it. It should be all correct anyways. Display, we do play with a little bit. Screensaver, zero minutes. We would like to see it on. Backlight is enabled. Backlight timer, you can adjust this to whatever you want, but that light is gonna stay on for three minutes until it disappears. Great display, disabled. So really the only one you might want to screw with is the uh, backlight. Otherwise we're out of there. Region, this is gonna ask you for your time and date and all that good stuff. So this is the format we have in this one. Time format, month, date, year, date fields. It's, you could change this to whatever you want to, but that's what we have set time and date. They pretty much seem to know automatically what time it is. Right now we are on time. It says one hour 40. Day at June 21, 2016. Out of there. Language, English. Transaction counter, not important for us. Users, that's if you want to apply a username, I believe. Let's see here. We, we pretty much leave them at their factory default settings. And if somebody wanted to put it in here and put security in, they can, but we don't. Soft keys, they do have to have a function. Our number one soft key is going to be comparators. So again, we're at comparators. To rewrite it or reposition, you hit the right key. So the soft key number one assignment is comparators. That's fine. If I wanted to change it, come down here, scroll through, and it'll give you different positions, but that's what we're using it as. So just up and out. Reset, do not. Communication, again, we don't use it. We can see what's in there, and a lot of it's simply for printing. Maintenance, 
the figure view again we're not using any of this stuff so we're all out of there you can scroll all the way back up you can see everything we've opened and gone through but you're going to be looking all the way up for home come on home press enter it's going to put you back to your original display and on this model again we're only using the one set point and right now it's sitting at 20 pounds so once you reach 20 pounds, you can hear it trigger, and that's it. Now, again, on our regular models, you may have two set points, set point one, dribble flow, set point two, shut off. 